Welcome back to Film Files. In today's file, we will be uncovering a fantasy adventure film from 2020 titled Dragon Heart Vengeance. Sit back and let's dive in. This is one more installment from the Dragon Heart franchise, amongst others. In the beginning, a narrator tells us about the birthing of seven dragons and their sudden emergence into society after a long hiatus. Before now, dragons were only heard of in folktales and nobody ever believed they would become real. But according to this story, they did and these seven new dragons which all initially originated from the kingdom of Britannia moved on to settle in the seven different kingdoms. One in particular, on which this story is based chose to reside around the regions of Wallachia. But it had since been banished by King Rosvon for allegedly not helping in a time of need. The story now focuses on Lucas and his parents working in the field. While his parents go back indoors, Lucas plows the crops with two yoked cattle. When he is done, he lays down on the grass. Not long after, he hears a noise coming from the family cabin. There is some smoke too, and when he gets close enough, he peeps through a hole in the outer shed. His father and mother are about to be murdered by four people. There is a snake who is a woman, and then there is a bear, scorpion and wolf who are all men. Once they are done with their killing, they set the house on fire and leave. Lucas is sad that his parents are dead, and so he picks up the pieces and leaves with the two cows for the city. Once he gets there, he tries to complain to the king, who is making the rounds among his subjects. He also sees Ona for the first time and seems to like her. His mission, however, is to seek out a swordsman who can help him exact revenge for the death of his parents. He meets Darius there, but some other swordsmen want the job. And so, a sword fight breaks out at the bar. The guards soon appear to control the situation and arrest everyone involved, but Lucas barely escapes. He runs as far as a blacksmith's workshop and sneaks in through the window to spend the night there. The following morning, Lucas is awakened by the sound of a customer. He then makes himself known to the blacksmith and tries to procure a sword in exchange for his family's land. Lucas is desperate for revenge, and the blacksmith senses this. So he points Lucas to the banished dragon and suggests it might be able to help him. Lucas gets on the road, and he asks for directions as he goes. Some people heckle him for his inquiries about the dragon and want nothing to do with his quest. Others actually point him closer to where he might find the dragon. He soon gets close enough and sees that there is a sign. The dragon lives in an icy cave, and Lucas climbs in. Once inside, he presents the offering of seeds as instructed by the blacksmith. Soon enough, the dragon appears and speaks to him in a female voice. Lucas angers the dragon by suggesting it doesn't have the heart to go the distance as it concerns his case because it is female. The dragon reacts, and Lucas is forced to take back his words. She introduces herself as Siveth but ultimately refuses to help him because she can sense that he is bitter. Lucas leaves her cave disappointed and walks into the forest. He finds somewhere to sleep, and by morning, he is woken by a white horse licking his face. He also finds a saddle lying idly nearby. He thanks his lucky stars. He takes the horse to the edge of a pond for a drink. While there, he is startled by Darius hiding in the bushes. Darius gets a laugh out of scaring Lucas. He also presents himself for hire once again. This time, Lucas accepts as they both iron out the details. Next, they devise a plan to apprehend the bear first before moving to the other three. They are soon well on their way. They get to a valley and decide it's the best place to ambush the bear on his return. Darius knows this because, strangely enough, he has divined with the earthworms. His secret power is communicating with living things. They pick their vantage point and converse about their personal experiences with the dragon as they wait. But then Lucas's horse starts to pee on Darius' bag. As he draws near to confront it, it suddenly transforms into the same dragon. An argument ensues because Darius doesn't like the dragon that much. He asks Lucas to choose between him and the dragon. When it is obvious the dragon could be more helpful, Darius gets on his horse and leaves. Not long after, Lucas is picking some berries and trying to eat something when he spots the very man they are after through a side glance. The bear is also picking berries and eating them. Lucas tries to retrace his steps but drops something and so alerts the bear. Lucas runs for his dear life, and the bear charges the men with him to give chase. 
they don't pursue Lucas for long before Sivith appears to save Lucas. She is able to neutralize most of the men. Meanwhile, the bear sees Lucas getting away and goes after him. He catches Lucas by the belt and swings him around, but the belt snaps and the force propel both the bear and Lucas. The bear ends up in a ditch and smashes its head while Lucas is thrown to relative safety. Lucas is elated that it's one down and three more to go. But the dragon doesn't like what revenge is turning Lucas into. They now head towards where the wolf might be found. He is their next target. Sivith seizes the opportunity to return to being a dragon rather than a horse and stretching her wings. Ahead of them is a forest where they hope to ambush the wolf. They are soon there talking and camping when the wolf and his men attack them by tossing a couple of beehives where they are. Sivith uses her cold dragon breath to neutralize the swarm of bees. She also starts to pick out the bad guys one by one. Eventually, she captures the wolf. Lucas wants to end his life right away, but the dragon says he is worth more to them, alive than dead. He might be able to lead them to the others. They soon get to the snake's hideout as they scan her place from a distance. But then they spot Darius there too. It seems he has beaten them to it. However, his strategy starts to go wrong, and he is soon in trouble. So Sivith helps him a little just as the snake seizes the opportunity presented by the confusion to get away. Lucas pursues her and catches up. They engage in a sword fight. Darius is fighting the other men somewhere else and is mostly succeeding at it. At some point, an ice shot meant for the snake misses its target and hits Darius. And then, both he and Sivith are coincidentally knocked out because of this. Darius explains to Lucas that he is bonded with Sivith hence they are prone to suffer the same pains. When Darius was a boy, Sivith shared her heart with him to save his life a long time ago. They camp for the night in a cave, and Darius asks Lucas to kill the snake, who is also their prisoner now. He says if Lucas doesn't, he will always regret not taking his chance to avenge his parents' deaths. Sivith, on her part, calls for some restraint. But Darius says Lucas should ignore her. He is still bitter at her for not helping him kill the one-eyed man who allegedly killed his parents. Just then, Sivith tells it all about what happened on the day she shared her heart with Darius. King Rosvon killed Darius's parents and not a random one-eyed man. Then the king betrayed Sivith for not saving him instead. Sivith says he was also a corrupt king who ultimately exiled her. They soon get to town, and Darius hands the snake to the jailer. Lucas also meets up with Ona again. Later on, Darius finds some written messages linking the king to the killings around the kingdom but loses them to some soldiers. That night, Lucas attempts to woo Ona with Sivitha's help but eventually decides to do things his way. He soon convinces Ona to go on a walk with him. As they leave, the scorpion arrives to break the snake free. Ona's father is also the jailer, and by the time they get back, the jailhouse is on fire, and the scorpion and the snake have escaped. The dragon helps quench the fire with her icy breath. She also wants to go after the evidence implicating the king in the slaughter of his citizens. Lucas would instead go after the snake and the scorpion. Sadly, they agree to disagree. Up in the castle, Sivith changes form into a dog and then a rat to blend in. She traces the letters to a gambling room where the soldiers are about to deal a hand. On their part, Lucas and Darius trace their targets to an icy plain, but they are ambushed. Darius covers for Lucas so he can get away, but while climbing to safety, Lucas is intercepted by the scorpion and the snake. He screams as he falls and Darius is momentarily distracted and so gets shot by an arrow. Then they both get into a one-sided weapons fight with the snake and the scorpion, respectively. Sivith senses that Lucas and Darius are both in trouble, and she abandons her plans to retrieve the evidence. As she flies, Darius is being held underwater as he drowns, which affects her until Darius takes out the arrow inside him and stabs the scorpion in the neck. Sivith eventually gets to where they are, and a snake who is still alive at this point after fatally wounding Lucas pleads for mercy. Sivith is angry and ends up chewing and tossing her into the river. Sivith must now carry Lucas away to the city to be healed by Ona. Darius insists she leaves him behind so as not to slow her down. Darius is bleeding too but has to make the sacrifice. So Sivith carries Lucas away, and he enjoys the flight in his unconsciousness. Later on, he wakes up to a few priests observing him. 
Ona steps in and is happy that she was instrumental in making him get better. Just then, King Rosvon arrives to implicate and arrest Lucas personally. But Sivath flips it on him and accuses him of being corrupt and killing his citizens. The king denies the allegations, but just then, Darius walks in with the wolf, who is missing an arm. At some point in the story during the attempt to catch the snake, the wolf tried to steal a horse to get away but Sivath froze his hand with her breath, hence the missing arm. Apparently, he also survived that incident. The wolf then goes on to corroborate the accusations. Some other members of the king's inner circle also confirm the evil deeds perpetrated in the king's name. So he is arrested, and everyone, including Lucas, is settled and happy. A priest even suggests Darius will make a good king, but he makes light of that idea. Later on, everyone is at the party to celebrate all the victories. It's a happy time for them all. Even Sivath herself is overjoyed because she likes parties and wouldn't miss this for anything. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and hit that notification button to open more files like this.